So it's March 2016. We just finished our 10th year of, of uh, bringing uh, students out here and, and working with our partners here in Louisiana. A great trip. It was an unusual trip. It was a very, very wet trip. So a lot of our schedules were sort of tweaked around and we had to change, stuff, change things on the fly. Um, but even with that, we still got um, almost all of Trail B, maybe 100 meters shy of getting full Trail B. We got uh, 1,200 meters of Trail A. We just now finished our permanent plots here. So that's great. We weren't able to get to Delacro, unfortunately, this year because um, it is so much wetter, but also um, just time time constraints. Um, but yeah, so so that was this year. Um, what do you guys think? I think the, uh, the forest is really patchy in terms of conditions. So where we are here in this front section, the recovery has been really slow. And if anything, over the last 10 years, we've been slowly losing the remaining big cypress trees. And every year we come back, there's uh, fewer and fewer and more of them have, have fallen over. But if you go further back into the back section and go to Delacroix, the character of the forest changes and it looks uh, much more like a forest. And there are still some large trees. Uh, we have uh, recruitment. We have seedlings of red maples, um, ashes. And so the forest is still early on in its recovery, but it is uh, slowly, I think, going in the right dire direction, at least in the parts of it. And, and I would add to that to say that initially, it seemed like in the first couple years, we'd see a tree start to fail. It would start to fail, and the next year it would be down. I mean, it, it, it fell pretty quickly. Or fairly commonly, it fell into other trees and then took all those, and then took that group of trees down in a tree fall. Um, and that still obviously happens. We're still seeing the, the, the decade-long shadow of Katrina happening here and Rita. But um, interestingly, several trees that um, you know, I filmed in previous years saying, oh man, this thing, let's shoot this here because it's not going to be here next year. Uh, they've not fallen down. They, they're, they're sort of, I don't know what it is, but maybe it's that the roots are getting more mature. And maybe they tore after Katrina and they didn't have a lot of holding power. So when they got pushed, they, they fell. And maybe now they've, they've put out that spider web of, of root structure and been able to stabilize. But a lot of these trees have been leaning for several years now. And I would have completely predict they've been on the ground and they're still persisting. Or we see trees that are basically falling down, but they're not dead. Years ago, I saw them fall down and they would snap and they would be they would be dead. Now they seem to have fallen down and and you know they they're, they're still have leaves years after year after year and they're setting seed and stuff. So they're sort of persisting at, at a um, sort of laying down stage. But what else? Well, we've been collecting um, herbarium specimens of trees for now three years. And, uh, you know, the, the finding of new trees has slowed down considerably. This time we only found one new tree, um, but that makes a total uh, diversity for the tree species, the woody species uh, here at Woodlands of Over and Delacroix for uh, about 34 to 35 species. Um, this year, we've, uh, when we do our, uh, our censusing, we tend to lump uh, the fraxins, we don't tend, we love the fraxins because they're uh, hard to, hard to identify, uh, distinguish. Especially this time of year. But this year, we've been able to, I think we've been able to discern that um, one of the ashes uh, leaves, uh, uh, flushes with leaves much sooner than the other one. So, uh, yeah, that was something we hadn't noticed before. Yeah. And so that's another kind of discovery. Cool. So overall, what would you, would you guys say the overall, your overall feel for the health of the forest is uh, now compared to a few years ago? Say at Woodlands here. Well, I think it's improving. I think that uh, Katie's um, uh, invasive species measures are, are working. And uh, I think that if she carries on with them, they they're, they're, will improve, improve the condition of the forest in terms of its native diversity. Huh? Oh boy. And we already have, I think we have a lot of that native diversity here is in, intact. It's just somewhat cryptic because it's it's uh, in the form of rare species, a lot of rare species, a lot of young seedlings in amongst a whole lot of early successional things, a lot of elderberry, a lot of box elder. Um, but I think the, the, the stage is set for a, a, a better looking forest. Yeah, and I, th I think this first decade has really been about um, w w what was a forest like right after the storm, what's it look like it's heading towards. And we sort of seem to have a handle on that, uh, 
who's falling out, who's who's coming back in. But now we've been starting to focus much more on things like, or bear, uh, you know, creating a, a complete um, list of all the species, looking at growth rates of these species. These things that aren't maybe the most important thing, but really help us understand the context, the history, the hydrology of the site. That really, as we go forward now with all this restoration planning, I think can really, really help. And the neat thing about that stuff is we don't necessarily, so our timing with the surveys has to be in the same year every year so we get stuff coming in. But this other stuff doesn't have to be at that specific time. So Dan can work on it in the summer. We can come out in the summer and do something. <coughs> Students can do projects with historical collections. So now it's sort of, um, we're adding, I think, uh, flesh on those bones of the surveys we've been doing for the last several years. And so that's kind of a fun, fun point too. I think the next decade will be a lot of that kind of cool stuff. Yes, and I found my wallet! <laughs>